Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is all about uncovering one of the biggest reasons your PC is lagging, background services. These hidden corporates are quietly eating away your system's performance, causing high CPU usage, frame drops and input delay, especially during gaming. So in this guide, I will walk you through the most unnecessary window services that you should disable right now and if done right, they can significantly boost your system's responsiveness. Let's get started. Let's begin by checking our current CPU load from services. Right click Click your tax bar and then click on task manager. Head to the performance tab on the left pane and then you click on CPU. If your processes count is over 180, you've got too much going on in the background. Let's fix that. Click on the services tab. Now head to the top right and then click on the three dots to see more. Then you click open services. These are the list of services you should disable. I will also explain what each one does and why you likely don't need it. The first one is Adobe Update Services. If you have it in your services, make sure to disable it. This updates Adobe software in the background and it's not really needed unless you use Adobe Daily. Next is All Join Router Service, which is rarely used and then supports old LOT devices. It's safe to disable, but I don't really have it here. Next is Auto Time Zone Updater. This updates your time zone automatically, not essential for most, and it's safe to disable. To disable, just double click on the service and then under Startup Type, click on it from the drop down and then set to disabled. Click on apply then ok. Next is assigned access manager service. This manages restricted user access which is irrelevant for gaming PCs. Right click on it or double click on it to open it. Under startup type you set it to disabled and then apply then ok. Next is connected user experiences and telemetry. This sends usage data to Microsoft. Major performance hog. Disable this one as well. Then we have diagnostic execution service. Disable this one as well. Then diagnostic service host and the last diagnostic system host. These three are for collecting and sending error reports to Microsoft. Disabling reduces background processing. Now we have downloaded apps manager. Disable this one as well. This is only needed if you use Windows Maps. It's safe to disable for most users. Next is Geolocation Services. Disable this service. This tracks your device location. No need unless location is critical to your apps. Then we have Microsoft Edge Update Service. Disable this feature as well. This keeps Edge updated, can be disabled if you don't use Edge. And if you also have Microsoft Update Health Service, which is part of the Windows Update Health Reporting, not needed if you manually update, you can disable this feature. Now we have Net.tcp Port Sharing Services. Disable this one as well. This is used for domain networks. Disable on personal or gaming PCs. Next is Open SSH Authentication Agent. Disable this service as well. It's used for secure shell connections. Disable unless you are a developer. Next is Parental controls. Disable this service too. Only needed if you have child accounts with restrictions. Next is removes desktop configuration and removes desktop services. Disable them if you don't use remote desktop access. Next is remote registry. Disable this service too. This allows remote edit to your registry. Huge security risk. Disable it now. Then we have shared PC account manager. Only for shared user environments, not for your personal PCs. Disable this service. Next we have sysmain. Formerly Superfetch. This claims to improve performance over time, but often it causes disk spikes. Best to disable this service. Next we have Themes. This is used for fancy desktop themes. Disable for performance, especially if you use classic user interface. Next we have User Experience Virtualization Service. This transfers user settings across machines, not useful for home users. Disable this one. Next is Wallet Services. This service is not really related to crypto. For Microsoft account payment only. Disable unless used. Next is Windows Biometric Services. Used for fingerprint and facial recognition. Disable if not using these features. Then we have Windows Error Reporting Service. This sends crash report to Microsoft. Save CPU cycles by disabling it. Next is Windows Mobile Hotspot Service. Only enable if you share your PC's internet as hotspots. Next is Windows Search. Disabling reduces background indexing. Green up RAM and CPU. Next is Work Folders. Used in corporate environment for syncing work documents. Disable this one if not in use. And now the last service, which is Xbox Services. We have the Xbox Accessory Management Service, Xbox Live Auth Manager, Xbox Live Game Save, Xbox Live Networking Services. Disable these services if you don't use Xbox Service on your PC. Let's go deeper. Some services can be easily disabled from the GUI. So here is what to do. Click on the Windows Search, type CMD, then you run as administrator. Click yes. Copy and paste the following commands one at a time. I'll leave them in the description. The first one being SE configuration die track start. You just copy the command and then you paste and you get a message saying success. Do same for the rest. 
Each command disables background data collection or network auto-tuning features that may add delay and use system resources unnecessarily. If it returns OK, the command has worked. After disabling all these services, restart your PC to apply changes. Once rebooted, check your task manager. Check your task manager by right clicking on the task bar, then task manager. Then you click on performance and CPU. If you did everything right, your running processes should be significantly lower, ideally around 100 to 120, depending on your setup. That's it. You've now disabled over 35 to 40 unnecessary services, reduced CPU strain, improved background efficiency, and likely unlock a few extra FPS in your favorite games. Drop a comment below and let me know if you noticed a difference. And don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you in the next one.